Hello and thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. Until now we've covered the basics of accounts receivable and how does a customer master look like. We've covered the different tabs within a customer master and also we've seen some of the transactions of a customer related transaction. We now look into the basic concept and the process flow for accounts receivable. So within financial accounting, the accounts receivable process is mainly based on the dealings with the customer. Initially, we will have a sales order which is created and then which is delivered and that is a part of sales and distribution module. After that, finance plays an important role when the billing document is created. Once this billing document is created, the customer sub-ledger is posted to. Also, the reconciliation account of the customer is posted to. This reconciliation account is nothing but an accumulation of different kind of customers within one group. Once this posting is done and a billing document is created, the invoice is printed out from SAP system and is sent to the customer. Then, depending on the terms of payment between the organization and the customer, a payment is received from the customer. This can be received via a check or an online transfer or any other agreed method. And finally, once a payment is received, clearing is done either automatically or manually. This process is more or less the same as how it was for accounts payable for vendors. Apart from this main process, there are also other transactions which are affecting financial accounting accounts receivable. For example, there can be any intercompany transactions or there can be any VAT reimbursements from the government or there can be employee advances or employee loans. We will look into most of these details in the coming slides right now. So the following transactions are related to accounts receivable, mainly sales order and delivery in the SD module, billing, revenue posting, interest for late payment, and employee advance. So what happens exactly when there is a transaction with a customer? There may be cases where a customer who is also a vendor for the company will have an agreed payment method or a payment term with the organization and thus they will be using an offsetting process which means if we have purchased something from the same company or from the same vendor who we are also selling to then there can be an offsetting process which is agreed in advance. Incoming payments. So in this example we'll consider an oil and gas company where incoming payments are made through a manual journal entry by debiting the bank and crediting the reconciliation account. In terms of an electricity company it can be done through debiting the net bank company account and crediting the intercompany transaction to the cross company and thus the cross company will clear it as a customer open item. Incoming payments can also be done automatically wherein you allow the customer to make payment directly to your bank account and you reconcile your bank balances at the end of the month. So what exactly is a billing process and who is involved in this process? For a billing process, you need a revenue accountant and a revenue section head. These are the important roles in an organization which help you post an invoice in the system. They are in charge of reviewing the cost data, reviewing the price data, and reviewing the original documents from the operation. 
In SAP, they will either post or park an invoice. They also have the authority to edit an invoice before it is finally posted. Once this is done, they can print the invoice and the process ends over there for them. The revenue section head, on the other hand, will be responsible for approving any financial accounting postings. And thus, the revenue is posted in the system. We also have the tax accountant who is responsible for creating a list of paid VAT and revising these lists if required. And finally, they will clear the VAT open items and send the invoice to the respective parties. And we will also need a supervisor who will approve this in the system. The incoming payment process is a little more comprehensive over here. We will have different roles like customer treasury, treasury administrator, and the revenue or the AR or the tax accountant. In this case, from the customer, we will receive any bank transmit advices once they make the payment or any other kind of supporting documents. The treasury department in the company will check these documents, will see if there are any mismatches. If there are, then they will notify the customer about the mismatch. If not, they will finally post the incoming payment manually in the system. On the other hand, we will also have the accounting service department who will check if there are any clearances which are pending or required in the near future. As we discussed earlier, there can be cases where the same organization is also a customer and a vendor for the company. In such cases, we will need an SAP user to check and prepare any supporting documents. And the AR or the AP supervisor will clear or offset these accounts manually. Now let us look at some of the transactions and business processes in accounts receivable. We have the primary transaction data, for example, customer invoices, debit and credit notes, and customer payments. Let us look into these one by one. Customer invoices are nothing but an invoice which is created in the system and printed out and sent to the customer. This is nothing but a bill which is created at any organization. The customer invoice will cover basic information like the name of the customer, the address of the customer, the name of the organization, the address of the organization. In some cases, also the bank details of the organization are sent to the customer so that they can make the payment directly. It will also include details like material number, material description, the quantity of the material, the price of the material, and the final amount of the invoice. Some invoices may incur tax, which is why the tax is also an important component of an invoice. Similarly, debit or credit notes will be an opposite entry in SAP. And lastly, there will be customer payments. Customer payments will depend on what are the payment terms with the customer? What are the payment methods agreed with the customer? Customer payments can again be automatic or manual in nature. Customer invoices can be created directly from SD module and posted to FI automatically, or they can be created directly in the finance module. In the example screenshot on the right, you see a transaction FB70. This is an example of creating a customer invoice directly in finance. This is how a customer invoice screen will look like, wherein you are expected to enter at least the customer number, 
the invoice date, the amount of the invoice, the GL account, and if there are any tax codes, then those are also expected to be entered at this stage. As you see on the top bar, it says there are options like simulating accounting entries and parking the document. You are allowed to park a document if you are a junior accountant in a company. And then either the supervisor or the senior accountant will approve the parked document and post it as an invoice in the system. So what happens exactly after an invoice or after a billing document is created? This information is transferred to the sales information system, which is SIS. This is mainly used by the sales people or the sales force in a company who then decide upon what has been the exact sale per salesperson or what has been the sales per week or per day or per month. This information system is very comprehensive and gives details right until the material number. You also have the updates in the delivery document and the sales order done automatically once a billing document is created. This can be viewed in the document history of these respective documents in the SAP. We also have the accounts receivable GL accounts affected. This means that once a billing document is created, a customer debit balance is created in accounting. This information is also passed on to profitability analysis, which is a different module under controlling. Profitability analysis gives you a specific breakup of how exactly is a company achieving its profits. And finally, a customer credit account also affected once a billing document is created. This is how a journal entry looks like when a revenue is posted in the system. For example, over here, we see that customer account is debited, which means accounts receivable account is debited and a revenue account is credited. And when a payment is received, a bank account is debited and the same customer account is credited. Hence, you see that the customer account is nullified after a payment is received. We will look into incoming payments in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World videos.